epic listicles. The worst crimes and tragedies in Nebraska history. Hello, I'm Angela, and this is Epic Listicles. When most people think of Nebraska, they imagine big open fields of amber-waving grain, quaint farmhouses and farm animals grazing peacefully. No one imagines the bloody history of what was once the wild frontier and is today a little bit of all of those things all wrapped up into the charming state of Nebraska with its closet full of skeletons. Number 10. Commonwealth Savings and Loan Declares Bankruptcy in 1983. When the stories first started to break, it was just about Commonwealth Savings being monitored for suspicious activity. Within 24 hours, bank regulators had shut the doors on some 67,000 Nebraskans that lost more than $65 million in the disintegration of the bank. In the aftermath of the collapse, the level of collusion and corruption revealed was deep in Nebraska state politics. Number 9. The Robbery of U.S. Bank in Norfolk, Nebraska On September 26, 2002, three men entered the U.S. Bank in Norfolk, Nebraska and began firing their weapons. Within 40 seconds, five people were dead. It seems the suspect entered the bank prior to the robbery and on his way out, he identified the locations of the people in the lobby on a radio to the other suspects. Three gunmen then entered the lobby shooting. The fourth suspect apparently freaked out and just drove away, leaving the three remaining suspects to flee on foot. All four suspects were apprehended within four hours of the robbery. The author of the listicle couldn't even confirm that the suspects got away with any money. Number 8. The Unsolved Murder of Leah Rowlands on March 10, 1997, Leah Rowlands was working her normally scheduled shift at an Amico station in Cozad, Nebraska. While finishing up with helping a mother and child, a barefoot man entered the store. As observed on the security tape, the barefoot man then spoke to Leah. She opened the register, gave him the money. She then lay face down on the floor with her hands behind her head. The barefoot man pulled out a 9mm gun and shot Leah three times. She died instantly. The barefoot man then took a pack of cigarettes and a soda, driving away in a red Pontiac Grand Am. To this day, this case remains unsolved. Number 7. Frank Carter, the Omaha Sniper In February 1926, someone started shooting people randomly on the streets of Omaha. First a mechanic, then a doctor, a railroad detective, all at night. Soon the killer was shooting people during the day, firing through windows and doors, bringing all of Omaha to a complete standstill. Within a couple of weeks, Frank Carter was caught. Although he readily admitted all of his crimes, his attorneys argued insanity. Losing their argument, Frank Carter was convicted of two murders and put to death by electrocution on June 24, 1927. Number 6. Michael Ryan was a pseudo-leader to a white supremacist anti-government militia-type group in the Rulo, Nebraska area. The group had been robbing and fencing stolen goods from the area for months to fund their anti-government activities, which included stockpiling weapons for the upcoming race war. Ryan was actually arrested for completely separate reasons. A criminal investigation had revealed that Ryan had abused and killed a five-year-old, Luke Stice. In addition to that killing, Ryan also killed a member of his group, James Thim. James was kept alive for several days while he was whipped and beaten. His fingertips were shot off. He was skinned alive, stomped, legs broken, and raped with a shovel. Ryan was sentenced to death in 1985. After 30 years on death row, Michael Ryan died of natural causes. Number 5. The Last Posse, also known as the only lynching in Lancaster County, Nebraska. In August of 1884, Luciano Padilla, a newly released prisoner that had been sent to serve his sentence in Nebraska from New Mexico, encountered 13-year-old Anna Grange. After befriending Anna for the afternoon, Padilla then raped and stabbed the girl. Found on the edge of death, Anna was able to describe her attacker, and Padilla was picked up. With the expectation that Anna would not survive her wounds, the sheriff took Padilla for Anna to give a positive identification. 
As this was confirmed, the sheriff noticed that a crowd was gathering outside. The sheriff was then jumped and held down as Padilla was taken to the scene of the heinous crime and hung till he died. It's worth note that Anna Grange recovered from her wounds, and this is the last known lynching to occur in the state of Nebraska. Number 4. The Rock Island Train Wreck In August 1894, a locomotive traveling through the Lincoln, Nebraska area was purposely sabotaged and derailed. The derailment occurred at a trestle 40 foot above the ground and killed 11 people. Police discovered that spikes had been pulled from the track, causing the train to derail. Although they had no evidence, that didn't stop authorities from taking George Washington Davis, a black man, to trial two times. Both times he was found innocent. This crime is one of the largest killing sprees in Nebraska history and is also its best known cold case. Number 3. 12 and 13 year old John Simpson and Jacob Serber went to the Nebraska State Fair in 1975 and their parents never saw them alive again. Both boys were abducted and later found dead. The authorities had a suspect in mind and other similar cases in the Midwest. They believed that a serial killer was at work and his name was William Freight Train Gautney. Unable to convict Gautney in Nebraska, he was ruled incompetent to stand trial in 1980. His murder confessions were suppressed. Gautney was committed to a mental institution for the remainder of his life. He died in 1997. Number 2. The West Roads Mall Shooting On December 5, 2007, 19-year-old Robert Hawkins had had enough. With some petty drug convictions in his past and an upcoming court date, Hawkins decided he wanted no more of this world and he wanted to be sure the world knew how he felt leaving. He wrote a three-page suicide note and left for, what else? The mall. After entering and scoping out the situation, Hawkins returned to the Von Maurer department store. He stepped out of the third floor elevator and opened fire. Hawkins fired more than 30 rounds and hit 12 people, killing six instantly and two more later from their injuries. Hawkins then committed suicide by shooting himself in the chin. This was the deadliest rampage since Charles Starkweather. Number one, Charles Starkweather, 19 years old, went on a killing spree from Nebraska to Wyoming between December 1957 and January 1958. Early December 1st, 1957, Starkweather robbed and killed gas station attendant Robert Colvert. After taking $100 from the till, Starkweather drove Colvert to the country and shot him. On January 21st, 1958, Starkweather went to the home of his 14-year-old girlfriend, Carol Ann Fugate. When he was told to stay away by Fugate's mother and stepfather, Starkweather shot them. He then stabbed and strangled two-year-old daughter, Betty Jean, stashing the bodies in the back of the house. Starkweather then went on a killing spree, taking Carol Ann with him. Moving from murder to murder across the state, the couple stole cars along the way. Finally encountering a car with a parking brake and not knowing how to operate it, Starkweather and Fugate were approached by a passerby. And just as Starkweather pulled out his shotgun to kill the man, Natoma Sheriff's County Deputy William Romer arrived on the scene. It was at this time the supposedly complicit Carol Fugate ran to the deputy yelling, It's Starkweather. He's going to kill me. Charles Starkweather was put to death by electrocution 17 months later, all the time claiming Carol was really the trigger-happy one. Carol Ann Fugate was paroled from prison in 1976. This has been the worst crimes and tragedies in Nebraska history. Thank you for watching Epic Listicles. See you next time.